A 3 of in Yu-Gi-Oh! refers to a card in a player's deck that is best run at the maximum 3 copies in said deck. The ideology behind a 3 of card is that running 3 copies in your deck gives you the most optimal means of seeing that card in your opening hand, giving you immediate access to its effect. And 3 of cards are a tried and true concept that any player worth their salt swears by. However, not every card in the game is meant to be run at 3 copies. No, I'm not talking about cards that occupy a spot on the forbidden and limited list, I'm referring to cards that at no point in time should ever take up any space in any deck ever. Not only because they're downright awful, but because these specific cards have to be run at 3 copies to even be usable in the first place, meaning you were given 3 separate occasions to foresee the consequences of your actions. So, let's look at the worst 3 of cards that this game has to offer. At number 1, we have 7. Huh? A continuous spell card with the following effect. When there are 3 face-up 7 cards on your side of the field, draw 3 cards from your deck. Then destroy all 7 cards. When this card is sent directly from the field to your graveyard, increase your life points by 700 points. This is exactly what I wanted my consistency cards is to be the most inconsistent thing imaginable. I'm sure Arrow Mage appreciates the potential 2100 life point boost as opposed to running 3 copies of Diane Keto the Cure Master. The draw 3 effect only applies as a single effect, so no, you don't get to draw 9 cards by popping all 3. Don't get any funny ideas, Exodia players. But you know, even if this casino jackpot did offer a potential draw 9 effect, I'm still firm in believing that no sane player would even attempt to make this happen, even as a cruel joke. Our next card is more of a dishonorable mention, that's not to say that it's good, believe me it's atrocious, but it's probably the best of the worst cards of all time. Minefield Eruption, a normal trap card which inflicts 1000 damage to your opponent for each face up mind golem you control, then you destroy all face up mind golems you control. Keep in mind that this is destruction by effect. Mind Golem, the card in question, is a level 3 earth rock monster with 1000 attack and 1900 defense and the following effect. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Well that's odd. Actually, it fits right into Konami's idea of quote-unquote synergy for their bad cards. The trap card meant to work in tandem with this card flies directly in the face of how its effect functions. I'd actually be willing to give these cards a pass and even consider them halfway decent in a less than competent burn deck if Golem's effect applied when destroyed by any means, given that you have the potential of inflicting a respectable 4500 points of burn damage, but no. What will be the case 11 times out of 10 is that you potentially burn for 1000 points of damage max in two separate 500 point increments, while you drunkenly attempted to place all three golems on the field then activate minefield. And in the .001% chance scenario that you activate minefield with three golems in play, you'll have forgotten that your opponent was playing red dragon archfiend and they will activate crimson fire. Better luck next time. Speaking of perfect counters to the most painstaking burn engine, Numinous Healer is a normal trap card with the following effect. You can only activate this card when you take damage to your life points. Increase your life points by 1000 points. Also, increase your life points by 500 points for each Numinous Healer card in your graveyard. Because we're suspending disbelief and saying that someone would run this card at 3 copies, its most beneficial effect comes from the third activation while you have 2 more copies in your graveyard, granting you a whopping 2000 life point increase. Yet again, there are still easier ways to accomplish this goal in your Table 500 Arrow Mage deck, and I will not tolerate any discredit to the mommy vibes of Diane Keto the Cure Master. Let's get away from life point shenanigans because we've got more Pot of Greed rejects. Greed may be one of the seven deadly sins, but if these are my alternatives for redemption, I'd rather burn in I mean the Shadow Realm. Three Hump Lakuda. What the heck is a Lakuda? Lakuda is simply an English translation of the Japanese word Rakuda. Desu also translates to death in English, meaning this card's name is quite literally Death Camel. Anyways, Three Hump Camel is a level 3 earth beast monster with 500 attack and 1500 defense with the following effect. If there are 3 face up 3 hump Lakuda cards on your side of the field, tribute 2 of them to draw 3 cards. I can certainly say that it's better than 7 because there are more means to make this happen and obviously a draw 3 can't be called a bad effect. But let's take a look at what you need to accomplish to make this happen. Normal summon 3 Hump Lakuda. 
Activate Double Summon. Normal Summon Rescue Cat. Activate the effect, special summoning two more three Hump Lakuta from deck whose effects are negated, but that's okay because we have one that isn't. Activate three Hump Lakuta, draw three. Oops, all prosperity, lose the duel. Or Normal Summon Rescue Cat. Activate effect to special summon two three Hump Lakuta. Link summon into Tri Brigade Farajit the Barren Blossom. Activate effect to special summon Dark Desert Taper. Send Fractail from hand to grave to foolish one Kokatorium the Heavy Metal Avian. Activate Kokatorium's first effect to tribute Dark Desert Taper to special summon itself from the grave. Activate Kokatorium's second effect to banish Dark Desert Taper from grave to copy its name. Dark Desert Taper's effect activates when banished, special summon one three Hump Lakuta from grave. Discard Super Nimble Mega Hamster to special summon Tri Brigade Karas. Link Kokatorium, Karas, and Farajit into Tri Brigade Shurag the Ominous Omen. Activate Ayers Rock Sunrise to special summon your second three Hump Lakuta from Grave. Activate Tri Brigade Airborne Assault, targeting Shurag, a winged beast, to summon your third three Hump Lakuta from deck. Activate three Hump Lakuta effect to draw three. Oops, all left legs. Then your opponent calls a judge and you're DQ'd from regionals because you somehow made it in with three copies of a limited card in your deck. Impressive, right? <laughs> Wrong! You went through 13 cards to draw three and lost. When it comes to consistency in card effects, most players will vouch that a bona fide search effect is far better than a draw effect. Being able to pick exactly what card you need will always be preferred over blindly picking up the top card. And while most search cards offer a pool of searchable targets, be that a specific level, monster type, attribute, or even card designation, such as normal trap or continuous spell, Gather Your Mind has only one appropriate search target, itself. Gather Your Mind is a normal spell card with the following effect. Brace yourselves. Add one Gather Your Mind card from your deck to your hand. Your deck is then shuffled. You can only use one Gather Your Mind per turn. Unlike a popular playline of running three copies of Tune Table of Contents in a single Tune Monster, which allows a player to immediately thin their deck by three cards in a single turn, Gather Your Mind searches only another copy of itself on a hard once per turn. Furthermore, unless you have means to constantly recycle a copy from your graveyard into the deck, that third copy is completely unplayable because you now have approximately zero appropriate search targets in your deck. Absolutely phenomenal card design, Konami. Our last card in today's trash picking is a classic that I used to play myself because I too was once a terrible duelist. I'm still a terrible duelist, but I own it now, and can't rely on the protection of blissful ignorance to piss poor card design. Attack and Receive, a normal trap card which can only be activated if you take damage. Inflict 700 points of damage to your opponent's life points. Also, inflict 300 points of damage to your opponent's life points for each attack and receive card in your graveyard. Instead of running something like Mirror Force to prevent the damage entirely and destroy all of my opponent's monsters, and or running Magic Cylinder, which is inarguably a better version of this card, I opted for a clean 700 points of burn damage and the destruction of my precious Silver Fang. I'm willing to forgive younger me because this card was a common and easy to obtain. I, as a peasant, could not afford the better shiny cardboard, and in my 21 years of playing this game, I maybe only pulled off a third activation once. And I still lost that duel. But that's gonna wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Drop a comment down below. In your opinion, what are some of the worst cards that this game has to offer? If you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.